Hey everybody, this is going to be my update to same pan last year, but before I get started, I'm going to ask you to please do all of the things, you know what they are. All right, so same pan last year is actually a project that I created, and I kind of created it based on what I was seeing in um, the panning community, where we get so tied up into, okay, I've got this product that I haven't used, so I need to get that into a project, and anything new coming in keeps getting set aside until it becomes that thing that, oh, I've had it around and haven't touched. So I went through the calendar, picked out all kinds of dates, um, literally all the major holidays, Black History Month, Women's History Month, Pride Month, all the, the big main things, threw in a couple little extra things and thought, okay, now we've got a place to stick some of the older stuff that we haven't gotten to, so maybe we can use some of the newer stuff in some of our other projects. That was kind of the impetus behind it, but it was also inspired by the fact that everybody that's creating all these great projects out there keep starting them on these dates that are so cool, like National Make a Dog's Day, you know, um, starting on the release date of Stephen King's last novel. Just all the really cool things that the women of the Fantastic Ladies have been doing, I thought was awesome. And I thought, okay, well, you know, let's just put together a calendar and do all this. Now, I don't follow rules. You guys know this. So basically, this is really open-ended. I actually just encourage someone, if they wanted to, to jump in now and just pick one of the prompts per month so they could do one thing a month till the end of the project. I started it January 8th. It's going to end December 8th because I wanted everything in one calendar year for everybody. I didn't want anybody carrying things a week into the new year. That didn't seem to make a lot of sense. Free up some time. Free up some time for some finales, for some family time, for all the things that go on. So that was kind of where my head was at with this. Now, if you can do some monthly updates on or around the 8th, awesome sauce. If not, yeah, well, things happen. Life happens. Um, a lot of people are doing this because it's based on a calendar. They're kind of setting their own, like, okay, in the month of March, I'm going to do the March prompts, or I'm going to do the April prompts, so I'm a month ahead. It's kind of however, and like I said, there's some generic things in there, too, like, you know, special occasion, your birth date, just weird things where you might want to put something. So I don't really get too worked up about how anybody does this. I'm just happy people want to play along. Easy as that. Now, we also know I like to bend rules so we can bring in things that aren't makeup, just in case anybody was curious. I have been trying to kind of stick with the whole makeup thing, but you know that won't stay true to form. So for Black History Month, which was February, it was a bomb product, a black-owned makeup brand. Well, I went with a black-owned hair care brand. Pattern is the line that is owned by Diana Ross's daughter, Tracy Ellis Ross, and I brought in the hydration shampoo. Nice shampoo. Um, it's not watery. It gives a lather. Decent stuff. This is the three-ounce bottle. My goal was to finish it. It's done. It's going in the empties bag. So that's a completed prompt for me. Then the next thing I had in was uh, Groundhog Day. So that occurred on February 2nd. And this is a product you keep re repeat purchasing or are doomed to pan forever. <laughs> for that, I brought in a NARS Orgasm Blush because heaven only knows. Anybody who has this has like 7,000 of these. Okay. And every time I turn around, I seem to be getting a new one. You see that? It's a little bit light. Once again, we're playing with some lighting. I'm filming during the day at a time that I don't normally film. But anyway, I brought this in to just get 10 uses on it. I have completed that goal. This is going to roll back into my collection. It's one of my favorites. That's probably the reason that I keep rebuying it, that I always have it around. I love it. I've actually panned one completely, like to the very last morsel of product. How often I'm going to be able to do that, I don't know. But... It is one of those that I will always have in my collection. Unless NARS does something really stupid. Never say, never, never say always. You know how that goes. Then I had just spring. I also brought in the seasons. So a spring palette or an item you got last spring or any previous spring is kind of where I was going with this. I brought in the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Facial Toner. This is the one that has the chunks of flowers floating around in it. Okay, we can, there. See, so you can see all the floaties in there. And I just brought this into finish. I put a line on where we are now. This was brand new when I started. This is was part of a kit, not for individual resale. 
Um, I don't think that was the bottle I necessarily got last spring, but that was one of the things I did get last spring. So that is going to remain in until it is completed. Then we had St. Patrick's Day, which of course was March 17th. So I said a green item or a leprechaun item. So something that's like your pot of gold or a miniature item, a tiny item, whatever. And I brought in the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. Okay, this was just a little one. This is a, just a 0.5 ounce. And this is completed. So that prompt is rolling out. Then, because I'm me and I have to screw things up somewhere, for April Fool's Day, I brought in an item you feel like a fool for buying. I brought in the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in 005 Petal. I feel like a fool because I have the Fenty Glosses. The Maybelline ones are supposed to be dupes. So not only do I, do I buy the Fenty ones, but then I bought the Maybelline ones. I don't even like lip gloss. And I have them in both houses. So I brought in Petal. Just thought, okay, let's just get some 15 applications on it. And I don't know what exactly I did, but I lost it. I mean, it's not in my purse, it's not in a pocket, it's not somewhere in my house. I literally physically lost it. I'd only gotten six applications. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna stay in and I'll just finish it when I get to Minnesota because I don't know what happened to the tube here. Is it the end of the world? No. Is it kind of a drag? Yeah, a little bit, but these things happen. Okay, then we had Easter, which is April 9th. Wait, yeah, that's coming up. Okay, um, so a pastel item. For that, I brought in the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream. This was a 0.2 ounce. It is all done. So that's also an empty, and that is a rollout for the project. Then Earth Day, which occurs April 22nd. I went with an eco-friendly item, clean beauty, whatever. This, I brought in the Sexy Hair Style Curling Cream. This I absolutely love. This is a cream. It is a white cream. It is not a gel, but it is definitely a curling cream, which is what I prefer. I'm not a, a big, as big of a fan of gels. Okay, it's, well, okay, you know I got a lot of natural wave in there. So this is one of my go-tos. This is kind of a holy grail. Um, there was a point where I was having some trouble getting it. I had tried some other things, but I always come back to this. This is the one I love. And they actually are considered a clean beauty brand. They used post-consumable plastic for their packaging, which is also then recyclable. They do all of the nice, conscious, earth-friendly things that we want companies to do. And I didn't know that until I looked to bring this in last month. I just knew this was a holy grail for me. And then I started finding all that. I'm like, perfect. It fits right in. So my goal was just um, to use this five times. I've used it four so far. This will probably be done before I take off for Minnesota. So you will get the update on that next month. Then I brought in Latin Heritage Month, which is actually September 15th to October 15th. But I brought it in because I had brought in the um, Selena Gomez Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Mascara Mini. And I had that open from January until the end of March. So March 31st, I dumped it. It went in the March empties, so I don't have the little tube for you guys right now. But it was something from a Latinx brand. This is a completed prompt for me because I got my usage, so that is going to roll out. And like I said, it was in the March empties, which you're going to be seeing in a couple days. Haven't gotten to that one yet. But that means that I am in a position where I can bring in some of the next things. And this time I didn't go completely crazy because, you know, I'm leaving in a couple days, so I'm going to be traveling with all of this. But I wanted to work my way down the calendar some more. So National Makeup Day is going to occur April 26th. So this can be any makeup item you want to celebrate. And I was thinking about that and thought, well, I don't know. And then it came to me. ColourPop's Ice Dreams. It's not just Deb that loves this product. She has gotten a lot of people hooked on it, but this is one that I had in my arsenal, and I love this. This is, for me, multi-purpose. Okay, you're not seeing much of anything here. It looks white, but this is white with pink reflex, purple reflex, blue reflex. It's gorgeous. It is an absolutely amazing inner corner highlight. It is a beautiful topper. Okay, I've got overhead lighting today, and I don't know if you're getting all the reflections on this or not. It's harder to tell with having to change the lighting up. But um, 
this can can fix most looks if they go a little awry. Like I said, it's great as an inner corner. It can be used as a highlighter. This is a ColourPop item worth celebrating, in my opinion. Plus, I absolutely love this. So I'm going to bring this in for 10 uses. I have it here, and I have it in Minnesota. Wherever I get the uses, I get the uses. I don't care. This is probably one of those that I will always keep around because this is one of the Super Shocks I actually love. So that's coming in. And then I just did April Showers Bring May Flowers. So an item related to flower or flowers in any way, shape, or form. And I had a couple different ideas of what I wanted to do. And what I ended up deciding on was this. I am going to bring in the Violet Voss Sweet Violet eyeshadow palette and it's got the flowers all over it's got them on the back I thought yeah that's pretty good I'm gonna just do this as a no pen it has a mirror I'm gonna do it as a no pen left behind I've used this before I know that I enjoy this and I should be able to get that done fairly quickly um, I'll probably be dragging it with me because I don't have this in both places but still I should get a couple two three good looks out of this and that's what we're going to do for April showers. Then Cinco de Mayo is going to be coming up. So May 5th, use a five pan palette or bundle because I do get a lot of the Sydney Grace bundles. I do the Copacetic $2 Tuesdays and usually those are a bundle of five. My eye is twitching. Please ignore that. Um, just use a five pan something. I don't care if you use a five pan paint palette. Use it five times. Holy moly. My eye is really twitching bad. And that's normally the good one. This is the one that has the muscle spasm all the time. I don't know why this one's going. I'm actually bringing in this Ofra Galaxy palette. Um, and I think I have this in both houses. I'm pretty sure. So I thought this would be a good one to bring in. This is my color story, you guys. This is that kind of pinky purpley, you know. And then we've got this gorgeous um, topper, corner, shimmer, highlighter, whatever it may be in there. Oh, man, I'm going to have to go take a picture in my bathroom lighting so you can actually see these things. But we've got a nice kind of shifty white. And then we've got this really pretty light pink. We've got a kind of violet purple. Okay, so wait, I did that, the highlighter already. So let's do the first shade. Come on. We'll, we'll swatch these so you can actually see them. And then, hold on, I need to get a clean finger. I have one more shade to get here for you. We've got a really nice deep purple here on the end. So these are the four basically eyeshadows. And then, like I said, we've got the highlighter here, which is um, very, very pinkish purple shifting. Now, these do have names, I believe. <laughs> You think I'm going to be able to see them? And I don't have glasses out here. Okay. So, we've got Milky Way, Stellar. The highlighter is, oh, geez, did you even see that? Okay. Milky Way, Stellar. The highlighter is Neptune. Okay. Then this one is Eclipse, and this one's Orion. So I'm going to bring this in for my five pan palette five times. Then I'm also bringing in one of the generic ones. I am bringing in Presents. And I'm doing that because I have got this Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Eye Base, and I've never tried it. And it's just a little sample. So I'm going to bring this in to finish. It is brand new. And so I thought, well, alrighty, this one was a gift with purchase. Now, I have the face base, too, that Kim sent me a sample of. I don't know where that is off the top of my head. I think it's still in the bucket. But um, I thought, well, this would be a good one just to bring in as a present, as presents. So that is the last item coming in. Okay, now, we have gotten through all of the project things. Let's talk about my music moment. Behind me that side okay that right there is a poster of Samantha Fish Samantha Fish is one of my favorite blues artists all right so essentially she started out she has a somewhat musical family 
Her sister is also a blues musician, um, although I think she prefers bass. And she has a couple of CDs out too. Amanda Fish is very good also, but I'm going to bring in Samantha Fish. And she has been, she decided that she wanted to be a touring musician and picked up guitar and then actually started getting gigs. She's from Kansas City, so she started doing a lot of local stuff there. Put on an album, got recognized, got put together with, um, it's Danny Wilde, and oh, now I got to look because I can't remember. Um, hold on a second. I will tell you in a minute. Cassie Taylor. They actually got put together to do an album, which came out as Girls With Guitars, but then they also toured with that. So there's a live CD and DVD of it also, in addition to the studio recording of it. Okay, we're turning off the volume because that's just annoying. Uh, but that's not necessarily what I'm bringing in. So her first album came out in 2009. Girls With Guitars was 2011 and 2012. She also did a... Um, she was on Rough Records for a while, so she did a couple of studio albums with them. Runaway is the first one that is more recognized from her. But what ended up happening is she she stayed with Rough for quite a while. There's a thing that she did, which is not a normal thing at all, and this is kind of where I'm going with all of this. I love her stuff. I love her as a blues guitarist, but she wants to evolve with everything she does. In 2017, she actually released two discs, totally separate, totally different. She released an album called Chills and Fever, and the entire album is cover songs, and they did it at a specific studio, and I'm not as familiar with studios, so I cannot remember which one it was, and that's kind of what I want to bring in. There are several songs on this album that I absolutely love, and normally you know I'm not one to go, hey, let's just go listen to covers. I, I do occasionally like certain covers but I try and cite the originals with this I'm actually saying her covers are worth listening to in addition to that she also put out Belle of the West at the same time or that same year which was really unheard of to do and that's mostly original so to do two albums in the same year is very strange to begin with to do this specific recording of all of these covers at this studio was kind of a unique thing and She's gotten, oh my, okay, let's talk about some awards here. She got Best New Artist Debut in 2012, Blue Awards in Memphis. Artist of the Year 2016, Independent Blues Awards. Best Independent Female Blues Artist 2016, Independent Blues Awards. Best Independent Blues Contemporary CD for Wild Heart on Rough Records, 2016, Independent Blues Awards. Best Modern Roots Song for Go Home from the Wild Heart Album, 2016, Independent Blues Awards. Road Warrior, 2016. I mean, this is just going on and on. Best Independent Female Blues Artist, 2017. Road Warrior, 2017. Best Blues Album for Bo Belle of the West, 2017. Best Modern Roots CD, 2018. Best Independent Blues Soul Artist, 2018. Best Stage Performance, 2018. Road Warrior, again. Song for Common Good, Female Blues Artist of the Year, 2018. Contemporary Blues Female Artist, 2018. Best Female Vocalist. 2018. This is the thing that struck me as odd is that she actually didn't get any recognition as a vocalist. Her guitar playing, her blues playing is pretty dang, dang good. But she actually has a really unique voice and she's pretty darn good with that as an instrument also. What she can do is impressive. So best female vocalist, best blues performer, best guitarist, artist of the year. And that was the best of the Beat Awards. That's not just blues. And then making a scenes 2020 independent blues award for artist of the year female artist of the year producer of the year best soul artist best soul cd best music video best modern roots song gateway artist road warrior award cd of the year you kind of get where i'm going with this this is someone who you may not know but you might want to give her a listen she is in straight blues she is doing some blues she's doing some rock she's doing some folk type of stuff holy eye twitch like I said, she's taking some of these really cool old songs and doing an entire cover album. She's someone you want to keep your eye on. She definitely doesn't stand still. Um, I believe she also formed her own record label. I'm, Wild Heart Records I think, is hers. She just started that within the last couple of years. I think that happened during COVID. So she's got a couple artists signed there too. 
Okay, the twitching is making me a little bit crazy. Now, I'm going to just link her YouTube channel for you. You want to jump all over with her videos. She does some really cool stuff throughout the years. Look for the hairstyles. That's how you're going to you're going to notice um kind of what era that she's going in where she has it longer than she has it shorter and she's got a very curly kind of like what's in my poster. Her style has evolved in her appearance as well as in her music. But I am specifically going to go to um, Chills and Fever and I am going to link a couple of songs for you because on Chills and Fever, I, oh, well, man, there's so many. There's so many. I love Little Baby. I love I'll Come Running Over and Either Way I Lose. If you listen to nothing else, just go listen to her cover of Either Way I Lose. It has got a beat and a hook that's going to grab you from the first note. Definitely worth listening. But like I said, check out all of her stuff. We're probably going to have her come up in again. But my nod to Same Pan last year kind of went with the let's do the cover songs of the oldies that she did to tie in to the project. That's where I was going with that. So I'll link the YouTube channel. I'm going to link all kinds of her songs for you. There's going to be all kinds of good stuff to go listen to. Like I said, she spans some different things. So there's something in there for pretty much everyone, unless you're really hardcore country. I don't know that I can... There's not a whole lot of country country. There's some country leaning sometimes. There's some bluegrass. There's good old-fashioned hardcore blues. She does... Uh, does she do a cover of War Pigs by Black Sabbath? I think she has a cover on her YouTube channel, too. So, I mean, I'm thinking I can find something for everyone within her catalog here. There will be something for you. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, go ahead and check out the description box. I did this in pan with the, in collab with Panastic Ladies. You know, they're going to link be She's Louise. They're going to be linked in my description box also, as well as you'll see that in the title if you missed it. Um, go check out the description box. Happy listening. Enjoy some videos. And until next time, everybody, see ya. Bye.